we greet our friends everywhere with Chapter 11 of Hudson and Maria, Pioneers in China. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, produced by the Department of Broadcasting, Moody Bible Institute, Chicago. In 1857, Hudson Taylor was beginning his fourth year in China. They had been overwhelming years, years of absorbing the Chinese culture, learning the language, adopting Chinese dress to the horror of the other missionaries, preaching the gospel, and healing the sick. As a missionary, he had made tremendous advances. As a man, he was very much as he had been when he arrived in China, lonely, alone, longing for love. It was of little use to try desperately, as he did, to ignore the human needs of a man with a warm and sentimental nature, and his pleadings, first with Miss Vaughn, then by correspondence with Miss Sassons, to become his wife and live with him in China, had come to no avail. When a missionary friend suggested a young lady in the missionary community at Ningpo, Taylor was far from enthusiastic. She speaks Chinese like a dream. And she's as zealous for the Chinese in her way as you are in yours. How would I ever keep a wife of her social standing? How indeed. If the Lord gives her to you, I expect he'll take care of her, same as you, Mr. Hudson Taylor. (sighs) Yes. Well, would you like me to inquire of Maria? To find out if there's anyone else? I suppose, if you like. But it won't do any good. What on earth are you doing? Gardening. What do you think? Oh, you're not going to have time for this sort of thing when you take over as principal of the school, you know. I suppose not. But I like to get a bit in every once in a while. You should have seen the garden I had in England. It gets too hot here. I know. I'm just about finished. Can I make some tea for us? Have you come for anything special? Actually, I'm looking for Maria. Have you any idea where she might be? She's not at the school. No, she doesn't have any classes this afternoon. Let me make some tea. Thank you, Jane, but no, I really would like to see her. I think I'll try over at the hall. Perhaps she's working with some of the students there. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. But I'm going to make that pot of tea all the same. Let's see, where did I put that tray? Hello. Oh, Mrs. Bossom. Maria, what a coincidence. Well, what is Elizabeth Jones was here just now looking for you. She went over to the hall. Oh, I wonder what she wanted. I've asked her to help me with some needlework, and she was going to try to find some special thread she had in her trunk from home. I expect that was it. As soon as I get this dirt washed off my hands... And the tip of your nose. Oh, dear. I'm going to have a good hot cup of tea. Like one? Oh, I'd like it very much, thank you. Actually, I was hoping for a chance to visit with you today. Let's go into the house, shall we? I'll put the kettle on. Mm. Now that's what I call a cup of tea. Oh, it is good. Nobody can make it like you. Nonsense. Every English woman, since Bede's wife, makes it exactly the same way. That's what makes it good. (laughs) I'm not sure Bede was married. Certainly he was. Everybody's married sooner or later. Even me. Even you. You've had some interesting offers, haven't you? Oh, some offers, but none interesting. Not at all. You're fussy. I'm not at all, if if you knew who I truly like. Maria, who? Oh, you think I'm very foolish indeed. I won't. Who in the world can it be? The, The reason it's foolish is is that I've really only just met him, and and I'm sure he hasn't noticed me at all. I can't imagine. Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor? From the moment I met him at Miss Aldersey's, I've been attracted to him. Oh, he's so funny, and, and yet he has a heart for the Chinese like no one I've met. 
And I think he's quite an attractive man, too, really. The Chinese clothes are a bit startling at first, but he is actually nice-looking, don't you think? Oh, yes, I expect he is. I've made it a matter of prayer. Of, of course, I only want the Lord's will in this, but, Mrs. Borsom, it's very hard, is it, not to, to have such feelings about someone and, and not to have them reciprocated? Come on, Hudson, let me do that. You'll wear yourself out. Hello, John. Almost finished. Miss Aldersey was right. The tree is dead. Well, I'd say you would be in one more minute. Now, here, let me take that axe. Look at you. Uh, we didn't cut down trees in Yorkshire. What trees there were there, we were glad enough for, huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. <sighs> Not much more. Well, I expect you're all packed. But what for? What for? You don't know? No, I don't know a thing. Well, our brave British Navy has been blasting away at the Chinese all week. We've received word that the Council has ordered all women and children here to be evacuated from Ningpo. What? Why, why, why we're all so used to the fighting, we don't pay any attention to it at all. There's no danger. Well, perhaps not, but we still have to listen to the Council. Anyway, all the Joneses are going, and you're to act as an escort for them, being the unattached male you are. Are, uh, Ella and, uh... Where are you going? Oh, no, they, they've decided to stay here in Ningpo. And, of course, uh, mm. Miss Aldersey won't hear of going. She, mm. <laughs> she's keeping two coolies and a coffin ready, in which, she says, she will be smuggled to the hills if there's any real fighting. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but are, are, you, are you sure that's safe for the girls to stay? Oh, come now, Hudson. You don't seem to be worried about poor Miss Aldersey staying. Oh, I am, I am. I do hope she'll be all right. <laughs> I don't know what you find so funny. <laughs> well, Hudson, how are things between uh, you and that girl in England? I don't know. She hasn't written to me in two months. But well, we're still engaged, officially, I guess. Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. I must wait for her to break the engagement, or, or at least to tell me she will come out, mustn't I? What, uh, what if she never writes? Oh, no, 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 that, that couldn't happen. Why? Wouldn't you spend the rest of your life pining away for her? No. Well, I'm, I, mean, I mean, of course, I, I should be heartbroken. I've uh, seen you watching Maria when we all meet for dinner. I, I have a feeling about you and her. I have never spoken a word to her alone. Now, please don't think things like that, John, please. I feel um, he doth protest too much. Uh, anyway, if uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder, we'll see what happens to your heart. Oh, yes. Yes, I forgot I'm to leave Ningpo. You are sad to leave her, aren't you? Huh? I think so. Oh, but she would never have me, John. She's such a lady, such a... such a sweet creature, John, so blessed with so many sterling qualities. Well, she, she does have a squint, Hudson, that the children call her cross-eye sometimes. I've never heard a child call her that. Why, why they love her. It's, it's, it's not a defect, anyway. It... It adds to her dearness. Ah, it is as I thought. You have fallen in love. I sometimes thank God for that weakness in her. I, well, it, it seems to give me a chance of winning her. Without it, she'd be too much perfection. <laughs> Poor Hudson. And you haven't even spoken to her? No. No, of course not. I, and in all honor, I can't. And I won't. I have Elizabeth to think about and. And, of course, I have no indication that Maria would be interested in me. Well, it's a pity you have to leave just now. Leave? Oh, oh, yes, Shanghai. I'm sure everyone's looking for you back at the compound to tell you the news. Uh, why don't you go on ahead? I'll finish the job with the tree. Are you sure? Of course, go ahead. Thank you, John. Thank you for being a friend. Oh, be off with you. Uh, you won't breathe a word of this? No, of course not. I just hope the fighting dies down soon and you can get back to us and uh, to Maria. Oh, shh. Oh, Lord, could it possibly be that you would give me Maria? Oh, I'm afraid to hope, Lord. I, I'm afraid to even hope. <laughs>
I have traveled far, my dear friends, to bring you this message. Only a few weeks ago, I was in the port of Ningpo. And now I am here in Swatow, in your city, to tell you about the true God who loves you and who wants, who wants you to love and serve him. Why have I come so far to tell you this? The Lord Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I will give you rest unto your soul. Uh, rest unto soul he teacher, said. Yes, teacher, postmaster told me, you come see him. He think he have letter for you. A letter? Letter. Yeah, thank you. Would Maria possibly write to me? Oh, no, 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 no. Who knows I'm here? Perhaps it's mail from England forwarded. I, I am... I am Hudson Taylor. Do you have a letter? Oh, yes. Here is a letter for Honorable Hudson Taylor. Thank you. It is causing me a great deal of pain, dear Hudson, to write this letter to you. I have I've waited, waited far too long to write it, because I hold you in the highest esteem and find it extremely difficult to injure you in any way. Forgive me that I have neglected writing this to you. In short, I feel I must break my engagement to you. There are so many reasons, dear Hudson. It would serve no purpose to include them, but I implore you to take this letter as final and only to write me once that you did receive this word. Again, I am filled with sorrow, and I pray that you will bring the matter before the Lord, and indeed not despair. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Don't be frightened. I, I've just received some wonderful news. <laughs> Thank you. Will you be leaving my unworthy office now? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. How good you are. How, how you know best. Oh, Father, can this mean that there is a chance for me with Maria? Maria? Now, children, take out your pens, please, and begin to work. You must count very carefully indeed, and, and take very great care with your work, because I shall be watching for the best paper. Now, you may begin. Maria, there is a letter here for you. A letter? Yes, it looks like it's from Swatchow. I thought I'd bring it right in. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Bossom. The children are just beginning a test. I'll be able to read it. Let me know if it's good news. Oh, goodness, I will. Oh, it is. It's from Hudson. <laughs> You've heard Chapter 11 of Hudson and Maria, Pioneers in China. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, produced by the Department of Broadcasting, Moody Bible Institute, Chicago.